Hi, David Taylor or Mr. Pelagonian back with another one of my video blogs for the Pelagonium and Geranium Society. Today I'm going to look at some of my dwarf zonals that have come through, some of my seedlings, some of my new seedlings that I sowed earlier in the year. So let's get through and have a look. Okay, so it's uh, it's good to see you again. Um, it's been around about just about a month. It's the tail end of July now, um, and I just thought I'd start to, to do a few videos. I've got quite a few to do. I'm going to make quite a number today, which I'll break up into uh, about three or four videos, uh, which I'm going to do. Um, so the first thing to do, let's have a look. You may see I've got a bit of colour. Uh, beginning to appear in the glasshouse again, mostly plants uh, from my seedlings that I sowed back in early March, you may remember, uh, and a good number of them have begun to flower. And um, the first thing you'll probably see is that I've got quite a number of whites. Um, I've actually never had a good clear white before, and I've got several whites. Um, I'll just pick up a few. Uh, here's quite a nice little one. Um, now the secret with a good white, uh, excuse the rain, it's just actually started storming. We've, uh, we've had some really wacky weather in the last uh, week or two. Uh, we've had record breaking temperatures last week. Uh, and this week uh, is all about storms. We're having a good number of storms. So the glass house is shut up. Uh, in, hence I'm being able to easily do this video without too much interruption. But the rain, if you hear the rain bouncing off the, uh, the windows, that's what's going on. Um, now a good example, I, these are, I did do a number of crosses of Shrivenum Star because they're all from the plant, the Dwarf Zonal Shrivenum Star. Uh, and I did uh, cross with a number of, um, some of my own, um, Gosbrook Susanna, we see a couple of crosses with that that are just about coming through now. But I did make a number of crosses with some basic zonals, Point South being one of them. And they've created a good number of nice whites. Um, now, the secret really with whites is a really good, strong white that's going to stay white throughout the life of the bloom. Um, and a, a sort of an example of that, this is a really good dwarf plant, it's not getting too big, I mean the leaves are fairly sort of, well what I would call sort of juicy and strong, maybe argue this could grow on into a, a basic zonal but only time will tell once you get the, uh, the strength out of the actual seedling plant and take cuttings from it you'll begin to see how it develops as, a, as an individual plant on its own. Of course, seedlings are always very strong growing. So um, you can't see to a certain extent how a seedling is going to potentially develop as the size of the type of plant that it's going to end up being. Uh, but in general, they follow what the seedling parent has come from. But here's a, here's a good example of a good white. It's not completely clear, it has to be said. It's just a hint of fading to pink in the middle of the older blooms, in the middle of the, uh, of the head there. Um, but it, it's, a, it's a good solid bloom, quite a large bloom. I uh, say, so, I mean, it's debatable where this may end up being a, a basic zonal, but um, uh, it's a really, really quite nice plant. I really quite enjoy this one. I will probably use them as just stock plants to grow on and grow as sort of plants just to uh, see how they grow as an individual plant without necessarily taking cuttings for them, just for my own purposes. See if they grow into, say, a good exhibition plant, for instance. Uh, and so we go on from there. But I, I particularly like this one, but I've actually got a slightly better one over here. This one, very similar in terms of growth. This is almost certainly going to end up being a basic zonal uh, because it's, uh, it's got a larger leaf uh, but the head is really sort of quite big as well. It's not quite as developed as the other one but it's got a, lot, a great number of pips growing out from underneath it. And the good, one, good thing about this one is that it's pure white. 
There's not a single mark going to pink at all uh, on this variety. So um, I'm really quite excited about that one. That's quite a good one. I think they'll almost certainly end up being a, a basic zonal. So I'm quite pleased with that. Now I've got a, I've got a fair number. I've got a, a great number of whites. Uh, there's one just beginning to come. Uh, just a hint. I've got this one's actually quite interesting in that the is just borderlined with a, a pink, uh, a pink line around the edge of the uh, of each of the petals. So that could prove interesting. We just have to see how that one develops. Uh, I've got another white here, similar sort of size. This one's a bit more compact, so that will almost certainly end up being a dwarf. As I say, what I'll do, I'll almost use those as exhibition plants in the future. Uh, another slightly smaller one, dwarf one. Another clear white, this. Uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Um, start off really quite creamy. Uh, and then they go back to being a, a good white. Uh, and I've got a fair number down this end. Now, I've got a couple of singles, obviously, from the same line. Because when I cross them, I, I actually put a label on the stem that the uh, from the seedling parent, the seed actual line where I get the seed from on the stem of the plants, Shrivenham Star in all these cases. Um, and these were all from the cross with Point South, uh, which is a basic zonal. This one again, pretty large, but this is a single. And this is very clean. Uh, slightly older pit there, so I'll just nip that out. But uh, this is a very, very clean white single, and I'm really quite pleased with this one. Again, I'll keep it, see how it develops, uh, see if it has potential to grow on as a, as a good exhibition plant, but that again is pretty good. Uh, a nice bit more compact as a pure white. Obviously got a great number of seedlings from this uh, stem from Shrivenham Star, and there's another white there. A little bit more of a compact head, that one, so that one almost certainly will be dwarf. Uh, but that's very clean in itself as well. You can see that I've given an example of, I've shown you the fading to, to pink, that does happen. Um, an extreme example of that is Shrivenham Crown which will give you a good idea because this starts white and you'll clearly see the center of the blooms as they age go over to a, a pink uh, and that's what happens to it. This is quite a good dwarf. I like using this for breeding in itself actually because it's got a very good compact habit. It was a seedling, another an early seedling from Shrivenham Star that I did several years ago. And this has got the classics fading to pink. So if you can uh, sort of get that out of them, which I obviously have done in the, the case of a number of these, I'm looking forward to really seeing how they develop. Now, some of the other colours that I've got. Um, this one, I actually did a stem of, um, of seedling heads uh, for a cross with uh, Gosbrook Susanna, which is one of my own, which is a red. Uh, I don't think I've got one opens, one just beginning to bud there. Uh, and I've got some quite dark magentas actually, borderlining on sort of mauve purpley colour. Um, so these are quite good. This is almost certainly dwarf, very tight, very compact. Been uh, obviously, semi, you know, obviously crossed with um, two dwarfs together to produce a good head. Um, now this is obviously going to be quite a, a deepish sort of reddy purple. Um, again, we'll have to see how the colouring goes on that. Good shape on that plant though. Now another one is a, is a really quite a nice magenta colour. That looks as if it's going to be a pretty nice compact. Uh, and the, the cross with Gosbrook Susanna, which I've done, they've all got a really good zone to the leaves as well, uh, which is what I do like. Um, now I have actually had a number of clones, where I call clones of plants that I've done before, and they've all been potted out into uh, into the garden, um, mainly because you just you know you, you're going to have plants that are literally clones of before. I had a good number of this single Ray Martin um, that cloned. I mean they were just all identical to this. Uh, just various slight shade hints, differences to uh, this plant of Ray Martin, which was released this year by Fibrex Nursery. 
Uh, so they, they've all been sort of put out in the tubs and pots. Uh, I don't waste them, I enjoy them for the summer, but they certainly won't be used. Uh, I've got a good number of pinks, uh, as you would expect from um, coming directly from Shrivenham Star. And talking of Shrivenham Star, there is the actual Shrivenham Star bloom, um, which is uh, a very light, creamy pink, um, palest pink. I really do like it. I do have a good lot of success with it in the shows. Uh, and this one, this is one of the seed, another one of the seedlings. Um, this line was actually crossed with the Shrivenham Crown, the other one with the Good Zone. Um, and this is just a darker pink. So I'll, I'll probably just keep these as exhibition plants to see how they develop. I probably won't do too much with them. I've got some slightly paler ones there. That's a nice creamy pink. And again, it's got the, uh, the dark sort of purple edge to the blooms, which is fairly unusual. I mean, um, whether that will be useful, I've got no idea, because really it's only a shade darker than Shrivenham Star. Um, but again, I will almost certainly keep these. They've got such good habit uh, that I will keep them as uh, show plants uh, to just see, just potentially use them for exhibition. There's another one of the uh, the crosses that with uh, Gosbrook Susanna. Again, these are only just beginning to come through, but the main key one of these are the beautiful zone leaves. And that's something that I always like to try and get. And this is going to be a sort of a shade of red. Um, as you, it's obviously taken quite a bit from Gosbrook Susanna, which it was crossed uh, from the uh, the actual pollen. Um, parent as opposed to the seed parent which is from Shrivenham Star but uh, really good plant that I will almost certainly keep that uh, and if, it, if it's a good enough colour um, I may consider it depends how different it is to do, to Gosbrook Susanna which I've used uh, for the uh, for the pollen parent but we'll have to see how that goes but it's got a better zone certainly got a much more significant zone than Gosbrook Susanna um, which hasn't got much of a zone Miss Gosbrook Susanna here, just beginning to flower. This has got a very vibrant uh, vermilion red to it. Um, and so there we are. It's certainly going to be different to that. Uh, so we'll have to see, but it's got the lovely zoning. And that's what I like about that one. So there we are. That's a, a little look at uh, a good number of my sort of seedlings which are coming out now. There's still a fair number which are still to come through, most notably good ones such as this one here with an absolutely stunning zone. Uh, it's got a stunning zone, but it's yet to come out. So we're yet to see the flower on that. One or two are a bit tatty around the base, uh, but they're, they're growing strongly. Um, and, you know, I'm really sort of quite happy with a, a number of them. I mean, when you're using a, a seed parent of one type, you are going to get a lot of characteristics from that original plant. So you're getting a lot of duplicates. Um, and plants that I will be able to ultimately use for one reason or another. And if I think they're a little bit different, a little bit exceptional, I'll take uh, cuttings over to Fibrex Nursery for them to have a review of them over a number of years. Now, the other thing that I have been doing, I've been potting on a number of the, uh, the cuttings which we took uh, just um, a month or so ago. They've all been, most of those have been potted on now. Um, and a, a grow away quite strongly as you would expect at this time of year. And something that I will be doing is uh, taking cuttings of my regals which are now ready to do and I'll do that in a separate video. So a little look around the greenhouse then. Down at my uh, regal end everything's growing away and as I say they've all grown back now. Um, from the cutting back that we did about a month or so ago. In fact, a good number of them are going to start flowering again. Uh, and I intend to do the cuttings in a separate video. Everything's growing away. Here's some of the, uh, the my seedlings that are coming through, which I've shown you. Um, everything's growing quite strongly, though, as you would expect at this time of year. Um, Really good uh, sort of growing conditions we've had. It's been quite warm. Now I have got an angel plant here, uh, and I got this from uh, well Terry Jarvis at the Bristol show. 
Uh, Terry unfortunately passed away and his plants were auctioned off. Uh, and I did get one as an angel. We'll, we'll talk through angels uh, a little bit more because I haven't had really one to deal with in the last couple of years. So we'll talk about angels uh, in another video. But everything's going on. We've got newly potted cuttings. Um, these have all been potted on now and are growing away quite strongly uh, as we speak. Uh, but as you see up the regal end here, they, they've gone absolutely crazy. Um, and uh, with their, they've grown ver away very strongly and we can get cutting material off them now. Okay, so that's just about it from me today. I'll uh, see you again very shortly as I'm making a good number of videos. So bye for now and I'll see you again very soon.